and uh, we'll dive into it from there. So Tony MCE Core, uh, this is the main project that is uh, up on GitHub and available for you to integrate into your project uh, pretty much free of charge if you're, uh, um, uh, if you're a developer. Uh, it has a lot of code which helps um, normalize content editable for, uh, for folks. Content editable is an API that is provided by the browser, but is very unreliable between browsers. So what we do is provide a layer that just gives you a very clean API to work with. And um, you can uh, uh, then execute a whole bunch of editable editing commands from there. Obviously, a whole wrapper of UI components from drop downs and menus and status bars and full screen views and um, buttons and all sorts of things that we have, color pickers uh, that we've done. That was all reinvented as part of TinyMC5, which came out earlier this year. Uh, and then a bunch of integrations so that you can use this inside your project very easily. We also have uh, 44 core plugins as part of the open source version. Um, they include um, a bunch of things that often have dialogues or their own APIs for, for doing things on top of Tiny, so that you can keep that sort of core very lightweight and add things onto it if you want. Um, licensing, you can choose to use it as a free open, part of the free open source, uh, or our, we have a free tier on our cloud version as well. Uh, what we ask in return is that you give us some product attribution, a little powered by Tiny, um, and uh, so that you can help uh, participate in driving growth around the Tiny, Tiny platform, uh, as well as uh, only access to community support, which would mean Stack Overflow or similar. We do have paid subscriptions, which give you a commercial license. It is dual licensed. Um, as well as premium support for that core tiny library there as well. Um, Q2 was, was super busy. Uh, it takes a, takes a team to build tiny these days. It's a, it's a very substantial product. Um, and we had over 13 individual contributors uh, contribute code to the open source core, which we're very happy to. Many of them work for tiny, but also uh, some community members actually contributed patches during, during the quarter. Um, that resulted in 52 bug fixes, um, over 24 new features. You can refer, can refer to the change log and release notes there that the team's done a very good job of, of keeping up to date. Um, one of the things that we brought back in TinyMC Core was the ability to have multiple toolbars. Um, this was a feature of version four that we um, had not yet implemented in TinyMC5. Uh, part of this was philosophical. We thought that a single toolbar was a better user experience and we've introduced some features to enable you to use a single toolbar and would probably still recommend that but obviously a lot of people had multiple toolbars and do have good reasons for having multiple toolbars uh, in their application so that is now uh, been something that's been reintroduced this quarter uh, into tiny mc5 so you can have uh, arranged the buttons on your toolbar just just how however you like uh, one of the features we've introduced for uh, enabling you to have a single row of buttons more easily is the toolbar drawer um, this was uh, inspired by tools like Google Docs, but even Microsoft Office has similar things to this these days. Um, uh, floating is probably the more trendy style that's out there. Um, and, uh, but we have also implemented something called a sliding style, which would push the content down. So again, as you work with your designers on your product team, you can figure out what user interface, what user experience makes the most sense uh, for your project. Uh, we have a word count API, so if you wanted to be able to determine, you know, how many characters, how many words are um, uh, in the content of Tiny MCE, you can interface uh, with the word count plugin um, at an API level, not just a user interface level. There's a, there is a user interface that people can see to see, um, you know, whether for the um, word count or character count for the entire document or the selection uh, as they drag and drop as a user has selected part of the document. Uh, regardless, these things are now available via the API. If you wanted to implement some sort of counter on the page, you would be able to access it through that. Um, something else is uh, now available in TinyMC5 is to be able to embed um, uh, an iframe into a dialogue. So if you had a custom media picker, uh, would be a good example, maybe a custom hyperlink picker, um, very often you're going to write that code uh, separate to TinyMC, um, maybe using your own UI library or UI components, and then want to be able to integrate that into Tiny. One of the easiest way to do that is with an iframe now. Um, uh, essentially, you can just pass a URL to, um, to Tiny and it'll open up in a, uh, a nice sort of light boxed uh, dialogue. 
the user would be able to perform the action they need to and then insert content or do other actions back to Tiny from there. Uh, what we're showing here was a great um, blog that one of our community members, uh, Marty Friedel, wrote. Um, uh, really wonderful article he published. Um, so there will be a link to this that we will share around uh, and you'll be able to uh, go in there. And please, I might, I might say that as we go through this, please, please um, post any questions that you've got and, and we'll certainly get to them uh, as we go through, uh, go through the rest of this presentation. Um, putting it all together, um, this is just a quick animated GIF of what, what I was just talking about is that you could implement a button that opens uh, a new dialog. You'll get a dialog um, uh, with the, bringing up the, the web app or web page that you've built. Uh, you can then use JavaScript to call back uh, and insert content into the editor or perform actions like bolding the content. Um, so hopefully that makes some sense. There is a, uh, a GitHub profile, a GitHub repository that uh, Marty has up there as well um, with the code for this particular example. Uh, so check it out. Uh, coming very soon in, in Tiny MCE um, uh, in uh, either uh, July, August, or September, uh, we have a sticky toolbar feature planned so that if you are implementing Tiny MCE to take over more of your UI, that you want you know the ability for your content authors to write in a very open, free environment, uh, the sticky toolbar will sort of pin itself to the top of the uh, browser as you scroll down. Um, a new mobile UI, uh, so that is upgrading all of our uh, UI components, which were brand new earlier this year, uh, to be fully responsive, to work on um, with all of the quirks that are in um, uh, in the mobile world in terms of native native keyboards popping up, being in the right location, to be able to select menus in a way that makes sense on a mobile. Uh, all of that work is ongoing right now. Um, and really excited to, to bring that out a little bit later this month. Um, I believe a lot of that is actually being contributed to Master on, um, on GitHub, so you could check it out there and uh, uh, give us any feedback. Um, we also have a new tech writer who joined us this week. Um, so we're looking to implement a ton of uh, improvements to the docs. Uh, you can never have good enough docs uh, in our case, uh, and it's something we're always getting a lot of feedback for. So if you ever have any issues with docs, please open an issue on GitHub or, or let us know and, and we'll uh, get, get to that as soon as we 